Roller rockers, how much are they worth? A cam swap, how much is it worth? Which one's worth more? What else do you have to do when you do either one? Let's check it out. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at a comparison between roller rockers and camshafts, which one makes more power? Actually, answering that question is very easy. Camshafts definitely make more power. Maybe a better question is, how much power do rockers add? How much power do camshafts add? And are there any problems associated with installing either one? We'll start off a comparison of camshafts and rockers and what each one of them does and which one adds the most power. I think that should be fairly obvious. But we're kind of curious to see what rockers do in comparison to a tip typical cam upgrade because rockers obviously are much easier to install. So a lot of guys want to know, hey, what if I just put rockers on? Will I get any power? So let's take a look at that. Let's start off by taking a look at a typical kind of camshaft upgrade. We know that we can get big power. And then we're going to take a look at what happened when we did a set of rockers and then a camshaft. And then we went back to stock rockers. There'll be lots of cool stuff. So let's jump right in. But let's take a look at a typical kind of camshaft upgrade. This one was a cam that I picked out. We could pick anything. There are lots of different cams for LS motors. I've run a ton of them and they all make good power. But we'll take a look at a 5.3 liter L33. It's an all aluminum motor that I got from the wrecking yard. And we're going to put a truck Norris cam in. Typical kind of 5.3 camshaft upgrade for a you know any kind of driver. So we'll take a look. We ran the 5.3 liter. It's an all aluminum L33. It was stock. We ran it with a stock truck intake manifold, a stock size throttle body. It might have been an Acufab. We ran it with long tube headers. We run it with a Mazir electric water pump and a Holly HP management system. It's an optimized tune. We put bigger injectors in this because we would eventually run a, a single turbo on this. And as you might imagine, both the stock cam and the truck Norris cam work very well with the turbo. But when we ran this thing with an optimized tune, and with no accessories and headers and, and uh, three inch exhaust. This combination produced 365 horsepower and 389 foot pounds with the stock camshaft. So this is a typical kind of camshaft upgrade. We'll take a look. This was this one was the Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam. And you can see this thing picked up power from about 3000 on up and pushed peak power up to 424 horsepower. Yeah, 424 horsepower. Peak torque was also up a good bit, up to 415 foot-pounds. And, and incidentally, for those guys that are interested, if you're looking for a camshaft like this, I'm going to leave my email address in the description. If you're interested in some uh, low-buck cams that offer this kind of power for a 48, 53, or 60 application, please send me an email. I can get you hooked up on a really cool camshaft. Makes good power works really well on the 4853 and 60. I have two of them to choose from. So again, hit me up and let me know. This is typical of a camshaft upgrade. Now let's take a look at some rockers. Okay, guys, our next test involved putting rockers on a somewhat factory camshaft. It was a LS7 camshaft, although we were not running it on an LS7. We, it was a test that I did where we compared a bunch of different camshafts on a 5.3 liter, all the factory cams. And the reason that we ran rockers on the on the LS7 cam is that it comes factory equipped with 1.8 rockers. All the rest of the LS family has 1.7 rockers. So we wanted to find out, hey, does the added lift on the LS7 rocker, does it actually add power? What we found out is that <laughs> it tends to add valve float. And this is one of the problems with just installing rockers. If you just install rockers, the odds are you're going to have to improve the valve spring because the problem is the factory valve spring this is particularly true of the 4853 and 60 that might have weak factory valve springs especially the 48 and 53 they have a very very small cam the early six liters share that camshaft they have a valve spring that's only good for about 500 lift but they also will not allow a, a rocker installation because you will definitely run into valve float and that's exactly what happened here and we even had an aftermarket spring on this thing so this our test motor was a 5.3 liter it was basically a bone stock kind of wrecking yard. It had stock heads, stock cam, stock intake manifold. We did have long tube headers on it. We ran it with a Mazir electric pump and a uh, Holly HP management system. We did all that stuff. It was an optimized tune. And what we did was I ran the factory 5.3 camshaft and then we put an LS7 camshaft in it. So to give you an idea what kind of gain we had there, this is what the factory one looks like. This is an LM7 camshaft. It made 353 horsepower 
and 383 foot-pounds of torque. And then when we put the LM7 camshaft in it, the peak power jumped up to 422 and peak torque was 394. But you can see that the LM7 or the LS7 camshaft lost power f below 4,500 RPM, only gaining power above that. So if you're thinking about that cam swap, either the LS7 or the LS9 camshaft, you're going to get these kind of results. You're going to have a, you're going to take a big hit in power down low, but get a bunch of power up top. That's pretty typical. So let's get rid of our get rid of our factory one. But we ran this rocker test with the LS7 camshaft. So we went from the 1.7 stock rockers to a set of 1.8 aftermarket uh, crane gold roller rockers. And this is what happened. The problem is it, it did start gaining power. It seemed to lose a little bit of power down low. You can see for the most of it, it was the same and it varied by one or two foot pounds, but lost a little bit down low, down to 2,500. And then we started to gain power at the top. The problem is running it to 6,000 RPM and trying to continue beyond that out to 6,500 like we had with the LF7, uh, LS9 or the LS7 camshaft with the stock rockers is that we ran into valve flow and we had already upgraded to a set of 26918 Beehive Springs with this and we still ran into valve flow with the heavier to and harder to control 1.8 uh, ratio roller rockers. Obviously, the added lift, we were going to be going from on the LS7 camshaft, we'd be going from 558 lift to like 590 lift, which is showed that it was going to be beneficial. It was going to add power. But if you're going to do that, make sure that you add sufficient spring rate to control those rockers. Now let's take a look at a comparison where I ran the stock cam or the stock rockers, and then we did a rocker upgrade, and then we did a camshaft upgrade in, in the other order and find out which one is worth more. Okay, here's our final test on rockers. And in this instance, we ran a stock LS1, the 5.7 liter, kind of the OG motor. We ran this in, in, in what I call stock configuration, meaning that we ran it with long tube headers, the Mazira electric water pump. We had uh, optimized tuning. In this case, this early one was run actually with a fast. And we ran this thing in stock trim. And then what we did was we tried uh, 1.85 um, rockers on it. And then we took those off, put the stock rockers back on, and then we did a camshaft upgrade. So let's take a look and see what happened. First of all, <laughs> there's obviously something we need to talk about, and that's this area up here from 5,500 to 6,000 where the, this dip is. That should not be there. It seemed to be consistent when we ran this thing stock, and I don't know why it did this, but this thing should just arc over and be flat. So what we did was run this thing with the stock rockers and the stock camshaft and run in this manner, our LS1 produced 423 horsepower and 421 foot-pounds of torque. So it did pretty well for a stock one. And then here's what happened when we put our 1.85 rockers on there. You can see that's <laughs> that's a much better curve. Not only is it a much better curve, but it also made a little bit more power. So this is the biggest change in power I've personally seen from a rocker change. With it, we went up from 423 horsepower and 421 foot-pounds of torque to 439 horsepower and 430 foot-pounds of torque. So to give you an idea, this was a factory LS1 cam, which was 498 lift. It was a 199, 210 duration and 119 and a half degree lobe separation angle. When we added the 1.5 or 1.85 rockers, we stepped things up to a 541 lift on this thing, and it responded pretty well to this. As, as I said, this is the most I've seen from a rocker change, and this was done way back. But what we did then was we got rid of our rockers, and, I, and I'll go ahead and leave those up there. But what we did was add a comp extreme energy 275 camshaft. That camshaft was a solid performer, you know, typical of a kind of a hopped up street strip kind of camshaft. It was a 560, 568 lift. And remember, that's with the stock rocker ratio. It was a 222, 224 degree duration and 112 degree low separation angle. And it picked up power quite a bit with the camshaft. The peak power now registered 470 horsepower and 448 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see the cam gained both peak power and peak torque a good bit over the stock combination all the way down to 3,000 RPM. And some may be asking, well, how, how does a cam that that's, that's that big add power down low like that or 
down low-ish at 3,000 RPM. The reason that it did that is because a stock LS1 camshaft, certainly compared to the truck cams, makes less power down low anyway. So it's kind of soft down there already. This camshaft added to that. But the camshaft obviously worth a good bit more power than rockers are. Rockers will get you some of the way. But again, it's very important to note that with the rocker upgrade, we did have valve springs in it that allowed the rockers to work at higher RPM without running into valve float. Just as the problem that we would have had with a cam, the cam was... Uh, Oh no, the the cam the the springs might have worked with that cam lift, but they wouldn't have worked with the RPM that we were eventually going to run. So when you're doing a camshaft upgrade, unless it's a NSR camshaft, you're definitely going to have to put springs in it. If you do rockers, you're also going to have to put springs in it. I'm Richard Holden. Please make sure like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.